Greetings friends, Jennifer Nicole Campbell here, and today we're going to be talking about a few practice tips for how to practice Beethoven's Fur Elise. Now sometimes what happens is a student will be able to play the first page of Fur Elise, because that's the most famous part, everybody wants to learn the beginning. Right, everybody knows the sound of that. The tricky stuff starts on the second page. For example, 32nd notes, all over the place here. Uh, measure 32. What's going to help is that you don't rely solely on your fingers, right? You don't want to... You want to use your wrist to help you do a slight rocking motion. Think about if you're opening a doorknob. You can also practice these as harmonic intervals, so intervals that are played at the same time versus melodic intervals, intervals that are played separately. So for example... Also highlights really nicely the contrasting motion between okay so you're also getting a little bit of harmonic knowledge in there as you're practicing another way to practice those 30 second notes doing groups of five listen to what I'm doing here So it's short little bursts of speed. It's like musical sprinting, right? You're not going to go on a full full run, right? 4K or whatever. Little sprints at a time. And then eventually you build up a little bit. Maybe do nine notes instead of five. It forces you to focus on getting them more even. Because if you play a whole stretch of something, you kind of let certain things go. Oh, I'll practice that later. So it forces you to focus on getting the evenness right now rather than later. Another tricky spot is very close to the end when you have these A minor arpeggios. Okay, first of all, noticing what content is there. Where are the patterns? Obviously we have this. That's a broken A minor arpeggio. I know students, you hate practicing scales and arpeggios, but I guarantee you, they're gonna come in handy eventually. So if you're doing this as part of your practice routine, Guess what? This is going to be a piece of cake, okay? So, now there's a little slight difference there. He has a little descending five finger pattern, right? So that is blended in with the arpeggio. So if you're not used to practicing arpeggios, first of all, start practicing them. Um, similar to what I was just mentioning before, short little bursts, musical sprints. Now the tricky thing with this is getting your thumb under the hand. You don't want... And you also don't want, you don't want the, the, um, the da 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 you don't want the chicken dance method going on. Right? You want most of the motion to be here, let your thumb go under your hand, okay? So just practice that transition, and then you can use the add a note method. Five notes, okay, that's good. Six notes, seven. Okay, now you're where you need to be. Another thing is you notice that you have a chromatic scale, starting with C. Know where your chromatic scale is starting and where it's ending, okay? So it starts up on C, okay? And they're all half steps going down to E, where we come back to our main theme, okay? So practice the ending as well with the chromatic scale. That way you're training your muscles, okay, that's where it ends. So I would suggest doing... Because chances are, if you're used to practicing, again, practice your scales. If you're used to practicing your scales, the beginning's not a problem. Oh, and then you start thinking, wait, where does this stop? So know exactly where you stop. A third tricky spot is in your left hand where you have these repeated 16th notes, which can sound a little bit chattery if you're not careful. So he starts off in measure 61 with these A's. Now, it, you might be tempted to just use, oh, let me just use my thumb. That way I don't have to move. Now, one problem with that is that you tense up because when you, you start using the same muscle over and over again, you start to tense up your shoulder and then your back and it's not good. So that's one reason why, and often my students will say, well, why would I have to, why would I be changing fingers on one note? One reason is that so you stay relaxed, okay? So, so I suggest using three, two, one. So that already by itself is a good practice tool, just to practice, all right, how even can I get that? Also, don't spend all your time doing that. Just listen to the harmony. Just play one note for each chord. 
also focus in on what Beethoven's doing with the harmony. Don't worry so much about these 16th notes. Just hear the harmony with one note in your left hand for each measure. And two notes, obviously, here. So that way you're hearing the harmony and not worrying so much about, I gotta get all these notes in, right? So beautiful harmony he's got going here. I love what he does with the D in the D sharp. He's really using those leading tones in a really delicious way. A fourth spot to look at is when we go to the beautiful key of F major. Okay, I would suggest practicing the left hands as solid chords. helps you understand the harmony and the theory behind the music better. I hope that's not Beethoven with the thunder. <laughs> okay, and then add your right hand to that so you can really let, the, let it sing without having to worry about, I have to get my left hand 16th notes right in order. measure that I especially practice because it's a very difficult transition moment. It's... Now see, I didn't practice enough, I just got some wrong notes. So, one and two and three and four. Okay, because you're going from this very elegant uh, floating... There's a little bit of hesitation leading into that. Now, what typically happens is a student's going to put the brakes on right away because, oh, here comes the second part, so they'll go along. Okay, all right, so, so when you're choosing a tempo for the piece, base your tempo off of the quickest note values you have because if you're doing... And you get to those 30 second notes. Now, while that might make for an exciting performance, that's probably not what Beethoven had in mind, okay? So focus on that little transition spot. Practice bridging that. So maybe from just that much. Resist the urge to do a whole section. It's so easy to do that. And you know what? The urge is a good thing, right? Because you want to play more music. You want to fill your spirit with joy and beauty and music. And that's all good. Those are all good things. But there comes a time where you have to sit down and do the practicing. So that way you can do the playing better. Um, I sometimes talk about this with my students. There's a difference between practice mode and performance mode. Practice mode is when you're really focused on using your skills and the resources you have from your teachers and from YouTube maybe. Maybe not all of YouTube, but some of YouTube, hopefully. And you put those skills into your practice time, as limited as it may be. You may only have 15, 20 minutes a day. Ideally, you'd practice more than that. But you really want to make that even more so focused practicing where you're doing little sprints. Don't try to run the marathon if you only got 15 minutes to practice. Unless you're preparing for a concert or something. That's a whole separate subject. When you're in performance mode... That's maybe you're playing it for your parents or your friends or your siblings or your family, relatives, whatever. Um, so that's when you want to sit down and you say, hey, I'm going to play through this whole piece. Okay? So something to keep in mind, practice performance mood. I hope that that gives you a few tips on how to practice for your release. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. And we'll see you next time.